Welcome to the Man Cave, the only podcast hosted by two best friends with nothing in common except their names. I'm Mandy Kaplan. I'm Mandy Fabian. And every week we test the limits of our, well, apparently enunciation and our friendship Ouch. by, uh, you know, arguing over movies, TVs, books. We barely ever agree, but it's a lot of fun. Grab a couch. Let's get to it. Cut this shit. So, in the spirit of sounding smarter than I am, yep, I would like to start by talking about a book. Another An book. one? A book, like you, a physical you, book. It wasn't that an you audio. Read. Book. I'm not listening. Oh no. my god! Wow. So my good friend Amy um, dropped a book in my mailbox and was like, "I loved it. It was so much fun. You have to read it." And I was like, "Okay, I'm wow. You know, we hey. have different friends, but yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get in with Amy." So I just want to. I'm. Only like 50 pages in, and I can't wait to stop recording this dumb podcast and go read more of this book. It's so much fun. Oh, my God. It's it's called How to Kill Your Family. (laughs) It is by Bella Mackey, and it is basically like a psychopath who has gone on a killing spree, and now she's sharing all the details of what she did and it is so much fun it really reminds me of one of my favorite favorite books called you which they made a series for for lifetime oh by carolyn kepnes oh isn't you on netflix anyway yeah it's on netflix now yeah it was on lifetime and yeah oh oh my god the book was like oh so good it's so good to be in inside a psychopath's mind like seeing the world through their lens well i'm always in a psychopath's mind so it's not as much fun for me yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, it's escapism. For you, it's just yeah. like reading your own diary. Tuesday. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> your own manifesto. So if anybody wants to join me on this journey, read How to Kill Your Family, and then we could start the Man Cave Book Club, and you could let me know what you think. I'm oh, just saying. I love that idea. Yeah. You yeah. can find me on Discord or uh, uh, at Mandy underscore Kaplan underscore Clavens. Yeah, at her if you also want to sound smarter than you actually are. That sounds... Right. That sounds great. I love that. Yeah, um, it's just fun. It's not like Amy was like, it's not a deep book. You know, it's just. Popcorn. Well, thank God it wasn't like a book that Amy wrote. You know what I mean? And you have to figure <laughs> out what do I say? Congratulations to you. All those words, you know, like, what do you say? Sure. What if you don't like it? Sure. That's always awkward. Right. Uh, um. Well, I not only finished ha- big TV week for me. I not only finished okay. Hax, finally finished yeah. it shocking season finale god i don't even remember um i should i spoil she's it like, she's like but i still am suing you right no she drops the lawsuit and she fires her so it's like oh <gasps> they're never gonna see each other again oh god i don't even remember this is yeah. terrible i love the second season and i and it was, i watched it weeks ago and i don't yeah. even remember it was really good i think it was uh, it's really finding its rhythm and the lead mm-hmm. is I think she's really finding her rhythm too. I'm actually doing a dance, folks. You can't see yep. it, but I'm doing a finding. Arms. I'm finding a rhythm dance. Yeah. Um, but then the other series that I totally binged in that fun way where you're like, I feel like I could watch two of these a night. Uh, the Bear. I couldn't get into it. <laughs> oh, and everybody loves it. So I think I'm wrong. But we we watched the pilot and I was like, I feel like I have to shower and I don't, I don't care. And I, ugh. oh my God, that's so funny. I love Everybody it. loves it. I know I'm wrong. Well, you know, you don't like swearing. Um, sweaty, muscly men are clearly not your thing. Not my thing. You know, um, so it's, uh, that's not all that's in the show. Everybody, if you haven't seen it, I, 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 I it's cooking. It's cook. Wait, wait. Wait, it's food <laughs> porn. Hold on a second. It's food it's porn. Beef sandwiches. Oh Who no, no! That? It's all the chopping of the vegetables and the donuts yeah. and the desserts, and it's it's a Food Network show. How can you not like the bear? It is so frenetic. I yeah. felt so uncomfortable watching that pilot. Like it wasn't a good feeling. It was like yeah. I just want this to be over. But how is that different from a horror film that also makes you uncomfortable? No, oh, not uncomfortable. Those are fun. That's, oh, that's a fun interesting. Ride. The bear's not fun. Okay. I, I mean, but I keep hearing, so maybe I'll try again. Eh, I don't know if it lived up to the hype, but I. Oh, but, really? But I still okay. loved it. I we yeah, we loved it enough it. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. We watched the whole thing. It was a lot of fun. Okay. And we went uh, to the beach. A lot of beach this week. A lot of it. A lot of sand in my crack. 
We, mm. I didn't say witch crack, so don't get excited. No, but now, and now I think I want to write a country song. Like a Zach <laughs> Brown, you know, toes in the sand, sand in my crack. Follow up. You, um, amazing. Uh, Casey had a cold this week, not COVID, but we basically oh. treated it like COVID and we didn't do anything. <laughs> and I, it really, for me, was like... I feel like I'm back in the pandemic where oh. I'm not leaving the house. Everything is like, well, what am I going to cook for dinner? Like I had nothing. It just was blah. So oh. I'm glad he's recovered off to school. Life can return. Oh God. Yes. That's, that's a drag. You know, anytime yeah. you want um, recipe ideas or inspiration, you should just reach out to me because I have lots of uh, vegan vegetarian things that take too long. And then you'll appreciate the stuff that you actually do cook. You know what I mean? It'll right. just make you go, ah, taco night's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Thanks. I don't need uh, your gluten-free <laughs> vegan. Whatever uh, you're making with black beans. I'm good. Yeah. I'm apparently good. neither does half my family. So it's okay. Oh, <laughs> no. Uh, they love it. But this will be therapeutic. Well, we, I selected uh, something very near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. They have adapted one of my favorite movies, A League of Their Own, for television. Yes. Uh, and it was adapted by Abby Jacobson of Broad City. And it's it's original, although it really pulls from the film. Oh, for sure. Um, and it's on Amazon. And if anybody has never heard of A League of Their Own, it's the story of how it's the true story of how they tried to start a female baseball league um, in the 1940s yeah. when men were off to war. And, you know, yeah, wasn't enough that Rosie the Riveter was in the factories. Now she's got to get out there and play ball. But this is. Yeah. The retelling of that story. What'd you think? Well, first of all, shame on you if you haven't heard of League of Their I Own. Know. I mean, come on, Gina Davis and Lori Petty. And that other girl, Rosie O'Donnell, Madonna. Okay. Well, I love that movie. I totally, totally loved, loved, loved this. I loved the series. As you can imagine, though, come on. It's a bunch of athletic women who are like playing ball for the first time and watching other women play ball. And it was like thrilling. And I loved seeing Darcy Carden as the Madonna character. Like, she, I have never seen her in a sexy sort of... Uh, you know, she's strong and mysterious and a badass. And I've never seen Darcy Carden play something like that. I think she's so good in it. I love Abby Jacobson. She's so silly and self. She does that self deprecating, I'm so awkward thing really well. Yeah, she's not silly in this, though. She's very relatable and she's our, she's our connecting character that we're supposed to go through into this world. Yeah, she is. But I, what I meant by silly is she's very, she's funny. She's very, um, self. Like she's goofy a little bit. She's a little mm -hmm. goofy, but not in a yeah. clown way, in a way that she's uh -huh. just naturally funny. And I, and uh, this is just like, I mean, you know, the bear is food porn and this is lesbian porn. This is like yes. girl fantasy. All female athletes are gay secretly yes. in the 40s. Very, yeah. It's very lesbian y. Very provocative. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I loved it. I laughed. I, my kids watched it with me. And oh, with the exception of all the, you know, there was a lot of language, but they've heard that yeah. in my kitchen, let's face it. Right. So that wasn't a big deal. <laughs> and I actually, I thought it was really great because, you know, Abby's sitting there watching this with me and I was like, well, look at this. How great that I grew up watching boys and girls kissing on the screen and chasing each other and having issues. And now mm -hmm. she gets to watch women doing that. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a normalization kind of, it's a normalizing kind of thing. I thought it was great. Anyway, I loved it. And you hated it. You're smiling. I'm smiling. I didn't hate it, but I, <laughs> I, I wasn't sure how you were going to feel. I, I, I wanted something different from this. I wanted something more that I wasn't getting. It felt like the movie was very grounded in truth and history. Yeah. And this was grounded in just imitating a movie. Yeah. It was just pulling characters and, and moments from the movie and forcing them in here. And it, it didn't, it didn't quite work for me. And I can't put my finger on it. Most of the acting is great. Um, maybe had I never seen the movie, the story would be a lot more like, Oh my gosh, who's going to make the team? And, you know, and I would be more invested, but it really, the first episode is like the movie crammed into an hour. Um, and, 
I'm not, I'm not, I'm not such a fan. I wanted to like it more than I liked it. Well, here's the thing. I didn't think it was the movie crammed into an hour because the movie is so genuinely about baseball. I think, I Mm -hmm. think the movie is Mm -hmm. genuinely about these women playing baseball, trying to get better, working with their coach, having some interpersonal dynamics that get in the way. You know, the sisters have their thing, but really it's about competing and it's about women playing baseball. This is about women on being, soap opera. being unable to be lesbians, having to wear, they really push the, we want you guys to look like women. Like that's the whole vibe right. of it is athletes can't be feminine or you're not feminine enough. I think it's right. a little over the top, like in that way. It's, there was a lot of very on the nose stuff. And, and here's what, here's the example of like why tonally it didn't quite work for me because in it, this is not a part of the movie in this, a black, girls trying to get on the team and trying to get seen yeah and pete if you could play the scene with her um the character max when she comes on with her funny friend at 1343 to 1450 please gals get lost on the way to the south side we're here for the tryouts but that's very chivalrous of you to worry about us being lost Mm -hmm. sir look i don't think you understand this is the uh all-american league I mean, we're pretty all American. Yeah, we American. You're born here. Yeah, and God, we trust. That's you know, <laughs> Jesus. You think you look like them? Well, actually, I think my form is a tad bit better. But <clears throat> we're from Rockford, Illinois, where we saw you putting one of the teams, the peaches. Yeah, funny thing, we don't really grow peaches in Rockford. We mostly, just grow corn. <laughs> Maybe you should call the team the corn. <laughs> look, we're not going to have colored girls playing with our girls. Going home. Oh, just give me one shot. One minute to throw for you. I promise you gonna want me pitching at every game. I know how to put on a show. Look, if you don't get out of here now, I'll have you run off. Okay, Max, let's go. No. No, let's just go. Come on. We're not leaving. Thank you, sir. Sorry to bother you. So it is so on the nose, like, what do you think you're doing, black girl? You can't play here. And then the last thing where she throws the baseball and Abby Jacobson's like, who was that? To me, that was like a bingo moment. (laughs) And for our listeners, we know what a bingo moment is. Like, Uh, it just seemed so cliched. You know, couldn't there have been a, a more interesting way to to introduce the idea of racism into this already jam-packed concept that like women are less than lesbianism is not allowed. And they're, you know, the most charming scenes for me are the ones in the beauty salon that Max's mom owns. Yeah. And all those ladies are fun. And I really Ugh. like being in the beauty salon. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm not buying it and I want to buy it. I want to love it. It's a little, well, you know, it feels networky to me. Mm. It feels very safe and networky. It's very kind of in the in the realm of we've seen these ideas before. We've dealt with these issues before. You know, like the whole thing about having gay storylines and characters, right? Where they're like, can, does every character have to be beaten up or coming out? Or, you know, that like there's that test right. that they have. Um, like, why can't it just be them moving through the world and being normal? Why does it always have to be about the fact that they're gay? <laughs> you know? Right. Um, right. I mean, but... I, I don't know, like this is sort of, that's what they're, that's what they're doing. And it is the 1940s. So it's not, um, you know, it's not wrong, probably. It's an imagination of that. That's where conflict is. That's why right. people keep going to that. I, I, I hear right. what you're saying. It's very, it's very, um, easy to digest. It's not complicated in that way. Yeah. And it, you said it's the 1940s. And I do question some of their choices in music. First of all, they keep, just pulling anachronistic songs and I'm not I'm not on board with using um take another little piece of my heart at the end of the pilot when we've been you, all the music in the show has been this 1940s fun right of the time music and then they're like now we're going to slap you in the face with like something 30 years later oh that's interesting uh, that's interesting do they do they use all uh times time appropriate music in like marvelous mrs Maisel? 
Oh, I believe so. Do they? Yeah. I I, I believe so, but I could be wrong. But this felt like a big old, like, what are you doing? And maybe there's a reason for it that, you know, or and maybe it's just a style that I I don't quite get. And, yeah. But, but you brought up the swearing. I need to say, like, in the 1940s, yeah. would they have said motherfucking? Like, they throw that out there a lot. Yeah. It, and it does bring me out, not just because I don't like swearing that much, but it's like, is this how people talked? This sounds very today. I noticed that with uh, at one of Abby Jacobson's first emotional speeches where she said like about every other word. And I oh. thought, uh, that's, Ugh. I don't think that's, I, who knows, but I don't think that was right in the 40s. I think like was something that came along later. Right. I could be wrong, but yeah, that's where, that's what pulled me out. And I, yeah, and I, I kind of just went with it because once she started talking like that and once all of the fucks and the, you're like, I I don't know that women would have just naturally thrown those around or men for that matter. But I don't, I honestly don't know. I, I don't know either, but it was, I mean, a lot of smart people made this, a lot of talented, smart, creative people. Yeah. So they must have been making that choice intentionally. I think so. I think I can't imagine they just, it went through the, through the process without anybody saying, oh, hey, wait, this isn't how they talked. So it's it's intentional. I would love to know why. I would love to know what that meeting was. It's like, yeah. let's have them talk like women talk today, but be set back then in appropriate dress and props yeah. and sets. And everything is, it looks fantastic. It does. The sets and costumes and cars. And yeah. it's really great. So why are they it's, uh, it's anachronistic? Because the writers are millennials, right? I mean, they're young writers and it's very much in their voice, I think, in mm-hmm. Abby Jacobson. Mm-hmm. And I think Kate, oh, what's her last name? Berlant. Yeah. I think she's one of the writers on the show. I don't think so. Oh. I could be wrong. Oh, well, uh, can, could I, you get the research team on that, please? I, research is on it. I hear they're clicking. Um, so I hear the phones clicking, so they must be working hard right now. Mm-hmm. To <laughs> Hey, Siri. Because I... Um, I, we loved her in Help Me Out. Oh, uh, Life and Beth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She was like in the beginning of Life and Beth and she was so funny. Yeah. And that's when I was, I was late to the party with her because she's done a ton and everybody loves her. She and John Early are a uh, comic duo and they've done a bunch of stuff together and they're hilarious. Yeah. Yes. So she is not a writer on this show. Oh, I'm wrong. I just assumed she was because she's a writer on everything she does. I'm sorry. I think uh, something cut out. Could you repeat that? <laughs> what? No. You know how you know Ugh. how technology can be glitchy. Yeah. You were weird. you were what? You were. <laughs> I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. Mm-hmm. That one moment in time, and I'm so glad we recorded it on history. You know what I mean? I do. <laughs> the people should know. Yeah, I think all also, the truth. Like for me, that that opening scene where they not opening, but like in the beginning of the first episode where they go to the ballpark and all the girls are playing and they're doing that slow. I love the way it was shot. I love the way it was showing all these women playing ball in this really badass way. I loved it. Um, but there's not a lot of that in the show. It's very mm-hmm. it, it was like this great thing, like, look at women playing baseball and doing it great. And like people think they're not going to be good. And, you know, as a viewer, they're going to be good and they're going to end up winning. And I love that kind of show. But the, but um, it doesn't. There's not a lot of baseball in it, <laughs> right? And I don't know if I would have preferred original characters versus. Look, this lady looks like Rosie O'Donnell. She's going to play that character, and Darcy Carden is going to play Madonna. Oh, that's and interesting. That you know, I I would have preferred like let me get to know and love all new characters. But they, it w- didn't feel like homage. It felt like, um recreating something rather you know and i just i think it would have worked better with new characters i think it is totally homage though because they're not like darcy carden's character is nothing like madonna's character really i mean she's strong and bold and sexy but she's way more complicated and way more of a a central character madonna was sort of on Mm -hmm. the on the outskirts that is true yeah Yeah. And, and that moment i loved when darcy carden kisses Abby Jacobson. Spoiler alert. And then says like, and then says, I thought so. And then that's it. <laughs> that was such a hot moment. It was great. It was like she was just testing and wasn't. Oh, isn't that mean? That was the pilot. I don't know if where that goes by episode four. I don't know if they're madly in love or not. But did you watch um, episode two? I watched most of episode two. Oh, 
Oh, interesting. Or okay. some of it. Okay. So maybe not. Oh, you're just... really not into it. Mm-mm. Oh, my kids are hooked. <laughs> my kids are super hooked. We're going to watch the whole thing. Oh, that's funny. I just didn't. Here's what I will say. <sighs> when I pu- pulled it up, it said drama, comedy, kids. And it said kids. So I was yeah. like, I, and in the beginning with all the girls playing, because we loved the movie. My girls loved the movie. Yes. And I think the movie is appropriate for kids. Yes, totally. Um, this doesn't feel that way to me. Well, it. I was sort of, they were already locked in by the time I realized, oh, this is, but it's the language is mostly. And then right. the sexuality I'm okay with because, you yeah. know, they're, they have questions and I'm, you know, you just, oh, I had a parent tell me the best little tip. I couldn't believe it. It, she basically told her daughter she was going to show her bridesmaids, okay, which is a full R-rated movie. Oh, that's that's a hard R. Yeah, it is a hard R. But really, what's the big thing? It's it's um Kristen Wiig and John Hamm having sex up top. It's like pretty graphic, right? But here's the thing: <laughs> she told her daughter she was like, "Listen, they are going to be Kristen Wiig and John Hamm. The two actors are going to be pretending to have sex in the beginning of this movie." If you're not okay with that, you don't have to watch. I'll tell you what happened. But like, just I just want to prepare you so that you're not. But the way she said it was being very clear. These are two people just pretending to have sex. And mm-hmm. it's and I thought, well, that's a great way to sort of make a kid not feel like, oh, oh, God, what am I watching? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's still maybe too much, but <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm like racing through bridesmaids because I've seen it a hundred times. And <laughs> I it, it's. I love bridesmaids. Me and too. I just don't think it's, you know, not for my kid. My kid wouldn't get the humor. He would be bored with the people sitting around talking as uh-huh. much as they do. Well, and based but, on um, your based on your review of A League of Their Own, you are too. You know what I mean? You like action yeah. and story. Let's get. I the- do. <laughs> I do. I need a. I need more plot. Yeah. I. The, yeah. This is very different tonally than the movie. This feels much grittier, and yeah. it's like intentionally trying to make us think about racism and yeah. uh, chauvinism and, you know. Totally, totally. And the movie seemed to be telling a very personal story in which those things came up. But this feels like it's it's shoving them down my throat. Mandy, that is a very, very insightful review. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that That is a very good point. The It came up in the movie, but this is this definitely feels like, in case you haven't heard, and it's very shout from the rooftops what's going on. That said, I love the way it's shot. It's, it's beautiful. So beautiful. And mm-hmm. I love the acting. You said that most of the performances were good. I honestly was marveling. I, I couldn't find a bad apple in the bunch. I thought everybody was really, really good and got their moments. I don't, th- I think that Shantae Adams, who plays Max, mm-hmm. is wildly inconsistent. And I thought oh. her first scene was not good at all. And that's like the first impression she left on me. Then I found her likable or, you know, I, I liked other moments. I think she's in over her head. I don't know that actress, but I, I am not a fan. Oh, I thought she was great. I was, I loved her. I really thought. She was playing it all really, really nicely. And her best friend's super funny. So you did Very not funny, see... but so anachronistic. I mean, that woman is doing a different movie. I mean, like, or I, 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 but I know it's intentional. I yeah. just can't figure out why, you know? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, anachronistic. I, wanna... I just thought she was really funny, but you find her timing and the way she talks and everything super modern. Oh, extremely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't really notice that. But then again, once again, when she started off one of her early monologues, she's like, 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 like. And I was like, oh, okay, that's what we're doing. So the woman we're talking about, oh, of course, she has a name I can't pronounce. Uh, (laughs) Man. Gemisola Ikumelo. Okay, sure. And she plays Clance, Max's best friend. And she is really funny, Mm -hmm. really sharp. But it is very, very, very modern. She's, yeah. it, it's, it's not, it's all the under her breath stuff and the commentary and the, it's just not, it doesn't feel of the time, which I know they're doing intentionally. So I'm curious as to why. I honestly think it's just the voice of their humor, right? All those things, uh, for their humor. Cause think about that. Like, how do you do 1940s funny? 
except make a lot of mm-hmm. sex puns. I think it's because it's the voice, the voice of what they think is funny. And so they just kind of right. go with, how do you make a modern day comedian 1940s funny? They didn't do it with Maisel, <laughs> except that wasn't the 40s. Well, that's the 60s. But you know what I mean? Like, I think you. No s- one's paying me, so I'm not going to answer that question. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you if you were willing to hire me on a show, I would. I am. Di- I would explain. I am dying exactly to hire to you on that. a show. It is my dream to. <laughs> it is my dream. That would be there would be nothing better. And I have, you know, like we did Young Hillary together, and we you did, did Punch Up on dropping the soap, and you know we. That's what I'm here for. Unfortunately, I haven't sold a show, so. If any of those if Fandies want to get on that, let's, you know, I think this should be the season that you guys help the Mandys sell a show. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it, like, I grew up watching movies like Adam's Rib and Desk Set. And uh, so there are ways for 40s women to be funny. Laugh out loud, sharp, witty, funny. So. OK, so it, maybe we need it to only takes a rewatch Adam's research. Rib to see. If that's still funny, like, would you get a 20 year old to laugh at Adam's rib today? That would be my question. We should. Well, then we shouldn't watch it. We should kidnap a 20 year old. (laughs) Definitely. Yes. Preferably a shirtless guy. (laughs) Yes. Oh, talk to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Now, there there was a scene stealer who is in this pilot who is also in Only Murders in the Building, Michael Cyril Creighton who plays the desk receptionist and Darcy Carden and Abby Jacobson are drunk and they're trying to write a letter. And I just want to call him out as being like, he's magical on screen. He's so funny. And he's so do, do I forget if you watch only murders in the building. I haven't yet, but I think that should be my next thing. Oh, I loved, I loved the pilot. So I just good. didn't for whatever reason. It's so good. I love it. And, and he's very, very funny on it, but also heartbreaking. And he's just a great actor. So I hope he's listening. Michael Cyril Creighton. I love that. I thought you were going to say uh, <clears throat> the guy, Nick. What's his last name? Offerman. Yeah, Nick Offerman. I thought you were going to say. Phoning it in. Well, yeah, but his character's phoning it in. Yeah. In the second episode, you find out that he's not really there. He's not super into this. Yeah. He's afraid it's going to hurt his reputation, which of course, as we know, because we saw the movie and because we are so good with television arcs, later on, he's going to be like, I was wrong. You girls are the best. Right. It was my problem, not yours. Um. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if the phoning I was feeling was like intentional. Right. Character acting, choice. Or just Nick Offerman feeling like <laughs> he is phoning it in. I think that was my feeling. I think it's an actor choice. All right. I'm going to say it's an actor choice because that's, Keep that's me posted in the because... story. I know you're not gonna... uh, fun little side bit or maybe not fun. So I'm going to say it really fast. My girls are super into Wings of Fire. Do you know that dragon series of books? Uh, yeah. Okay. So they Wings of Fire has a huge fan thing and they're constantly making videos where they take little segments of comedy from popular shows and they have the dragons doing the dialogue. So, oh, okay. So they know the dialogue from these shows, but they don't, they don't know the people. <laughs> so during right. the show, we would have to pause, mom, pause, pause, pause. And Darcy Carden, they're like, Oh my God. She's the one who says, again, these children are not human. Like, you know, again, I am not human. Like they, all of their show from uh, the good place. There's this really mm-hmm. popular clip that they use. And then Nick Offerman, oh. they use a very popular thing from Parks and Rec. So oh, okay. they were freaking out that they, these people were the voices of the dragons. <laughs> right. Right. I don't know if it's adorable, but I said it fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How many man jobs will you be giving a league of their own this series? That was the fakest laugh I've, laugh I've ever heard. Like, don't, don't, you don't have to fake laugh for me. Okay. You can. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, I mean, God, could we go back and re-record the first two seasons of our, of our podcast? <laughs> you did say it fast. It was cute. I'm joking. Um, I would give it, I don't know. I'd give it, I'd give it where I usually sit. Three and a half, maybe four. I don't know. It's, it's, um, we're going to see where it goes. I need more story as well. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I need more story as well, but I'm on board so far. There's a lot to like about it for me. It, I just, it, like, it hurts me that it's not giving me more of what I like, you know? And yeah. so I, if, I, I don't know, if you said, come on over and I'll give you cheese and we'll watch another episode, I would do that. So I'll give it like, Two and three quarter stars. It's and it 
it really is so beautifully made. Um, and I love the costumes and the hair and the, you know, it, so yeah. there's a lot to like about it. Yeah. Um, and I'd be curious, this is one I would love to hear from Vandy's about, like, or, you know, I, please, please watch it. Please reach out on Discord or social media or however, or come to my house. I don't care. But I'll I'm, give you her address at the end of the podcast. Am I being too critical? I know I'm such a critical person and maybe I'm just unable to go on the journey. So I, I, I you know it. it's okay. yeah it this is how I test whether movies are actually Oscar worthy is can I stay awake through them because you're always watching mm-hmm. Oscar movies in the winter when the the sun goes down at five and you need to be in bed by mm-hmm. eight and we start oh yeah so if I can stay oh, awake sounds so good I mean I slept through doubt which I know everybody loved I'm like nope it's not a good movie because I didn't stay awake where there were other movies I actually stayed awake for doubt with Philip Seymour Hoffman and Amy Adams and Meryl Streep is that what you yeah, just said yeah yeah I mean I slept through it oh my god I'm oh my it, god. Look, it was a wonderful play. I loved the play, but the movie didn't uh, hold my attention. I was asleep. I love the movie. Oh well, god, I love. You know. Oh, you're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> I'll have to rewatch and we're it. Back. Um, okay, so uh, yes. I do have a game. Oh, good. Uh, but before we do that game, uh, I want to. I'm going to go out of order here with our business because we have a new yeah. review. We need those five star reviews. So Sexy. if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, I love please. It. Pause us right now. Do they and do they name me five specifically, stars. Mandy? Do they say Mandy specifically in the in the review? A lot of people talk about how they like Mandy the best. <laughs> that is, yeah, that Mandy's so pretty and Mandy's the best. I will never get tired of that joke. Uh, this uh, no, how could we? It's been twenty five years. Uh, this at Mern forty one has left us a rave review and thank you for that. So if you want to shout out on the podcast, uh, then please, please leave us that five-star review it helps us get seen and grow and we want to keep doing this and if you are so moved to become a fandy we've started recording Mm pre-shows uh so you can hear a little behind the scenes personal stuff and yeah you can hear how mandy tried to sabotage the podcast um so (laughs) for that you go to mandcave.com slash Fandy, F-A-N-D-Y. Yeah. And join us, one of us. Become one of us. Yeah, this is a great show. By the way, we should shout out to, uh, it's a production of True Story FM. Pete Wright does our engineering. Ian Post uh, does our music. So thank you, guys. Uh, did you tell people where to go to become a Fandy? Mancave.com yes, slash Fandy. Great. Oh, you just tuned me out. No, I didn't. I was just trying to keep track of it because, you know, Mm -hmm. you're smarter than you sound, obviously. You know what I mean? Like with the whole book thing. Like, thank you. Ah, Mancave.com slash merch is where you can feel very cozy about being madly in love with us. And uh, we make little jokes on the show sometime and then they whip up these amazing graphic designs to put on merch. They're really fun. So go to Mancave.com slash merch and uh, buy a t-shirt for you and, and your best friend. And then you Thank guys can you, start everybody. a podcast, and but don't don't compete with ours. Thank you. So I think one of the reasons I really love a league of their own is you know because I played baseball uh, through college essentially, and I stop. Um, what? No, you didn't know that. You no, you're you're making that up. You're making that up. Shit. Well, now this is not going to go well because I have a true or false game and I was counting on you buying that. And then I was going to say, no, I'm just kidding. I didn't. You don't know anything about me. And but I am going to do some true or falses about me. Great. Love it. Because I never played baseball. Um, (laughs) My famous baseball story. You even real quick. Yeah. What? No, you made your husband switch over. He was a huge baseball fan. And then you guys yeah. started dating and he dropped baseball like a hot rock and became a huge football fan. That's how much you don't even love baseball. That is true. See, you do know <laughs> stuff about me. Oh, this game is not going to go well for me. But I played in a softball league um, many moons ago. Somebody like, uh-oh, somebody's hurt. They can't play. Mandy, you got to play. And I was like, oh, okay, sure, you know, fun. So they stick me way, 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 way out. <laughs> and they're like, just, oh my God, don't get in the way. If, you know, if something comes your way, try to catch it. Right. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I know how to play. Yeah. I know, I understand the game. So I'm way out there. And sure enough, <gasps> I'm like, I'm tuned out. I'm, 
I don't know what I'm doing. I'm choreographing something in my head and the ball starts coming my way. Oh. Everybody's screaming like, catch it, catch it, Mandy, Mandy, it's you, it's you, catch it, catch it. And I put my hand up and I close my eyes and I catch it. Ah! And then they're like, now you got to throw to, you throw it to first, throw it to first. Like, because somebody had taken off and I had to, you know, right? <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. I was so proud. I was so cocky because I'm like, I caught it. I caught it. <laughs> Clean. I caught it. I take the ball and I hurl it as far as I can towards first base. It goes about four feet. (laughs) As if I spiked it. It was so embarrassing. And everyone was like, oh, like I felt all the love and adoration. Oh, my God. And then all the judgment and hatred so fast. (laughs) So that's my that's my traumatic baseball story. So you remember that day you came to play beach volleyball with us and you were so good. And I was like, yeah. man, have you been practicing? Like, what's going on? And you were like, I don't know. It's magic. I'm not yeah. good at beach volleyball at all. But you were crushing it that day. It was I amazing. Was. Oh, so it, was it best happens. Day. It do- yeah, you have. Your- I had my moments. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm not athletic. I will not say I'm athletic. But I do love to play. Yes. I'll get in there. I'll get dirty. I'll, you know, so it's it's fun. Okay. So what else is true about me. I'm just going to state some facts and you say <laughs> true or false. Are you ready? Oh, oh God. Yep. Totally. <clears throat> I was born deaf in one ear. <laughs> that is false. That is false. Uh, nobody's really, got as, perfect pitch like yours. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> uh, I worked at a gentleman's club. A gentleman's club. Well, that just depends on what kind of gentleman's club. You mean like a strip club? Dang. I'm going to say yes, was, because I think it was that place Whiskey on 46th Street in Manhattan or something, right? It was not that place. That was even more of a gentleman's club where I had to wear a cat suit to serve cocktails. Yes. No, this was, you are correct. It is true. I answered phones at a gentleman's <gasps> club, but it is not a strip club. It was on the Upper East Side, and it was like a private club for men to go and like smoke cigars and stay away from their families. And they would like go up the stairs. And they it was like... A, they had a little gym and rich, rich white dudes would spend all this money to be like, I'm going to go upstairs and uh, if if someone calls for me, forward it to the blank lounge wow. and I was the receptionist. Was it the spank lounge? No. <laughs> um, I gotta but get... I loved saying to people, I work at a gentleman's club. <laughs> That's awesome. But... I got to get Patrick a membership to one of those. That sounds great. That sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I was a nanny for a major TV star. I took care of someone who is now a major TV star. I know you were a nanny, but I don't know if it was a major TV star. So I'm going to say yes. Yes. God, you're really good at this. (laughs) Uh, I was a a nanny for Hannah Zeal, who was the star of On This Is Us. She played young Chrissy Metz. Oh, my God. And she was my little Hannah Madonna when she was four and five and six. Oh, yeah. that's so cute. Does she does she reach yeah. out to see if you want to do any personal assistant work now? I mean, <laughs> she has not. <laughs> okay. You're missing out, Hannah. I mean, Mandy is organized. <laughs> she is on time, functional, <laughs> gives great advice. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Oh, oh okay. Next fact. I can still do the splits. That is false gosh <laughs> man i feel like i would have seen you do it in miscast if you could do it <laughs> that is actually true the last time i did a split was in my 20s in new york i was drunk on the street with my friend and she's like you still can't do splits and i was like yeah i can and i did the splits and then i looked next to me and there was like a cafe with all these people eating <laughs> It was. It wasn't a cafe. It was a late night place. To be clear, oh. it was like two in the morning, stumbling home from a, a, a bar. That's fantastic. And I was in a split, and I looked up, and all these people were like, "Hey, drunk lady <laughs> on the street doing a split." So oh my that God. was my. That's when I retired the split. Well, that's how I know you're not a germaphobe because doing anything that spreads out half your body on the streets of Manhattan is like. <laughs> and were you wearing a skirt? That's what I want to know. Skirt or pants? Most likely pants. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, this is story. this is not going well for me. But here's the last I one. I think it's going nev- very well for you. <laughs> I've never been to Canada. Huh? 
You've never been to Canada. <laughs> You've never been to Canada. Um, ah, it seems impossible because you travel so much. And I feel like you had a friend that lived in Montreal. So I'm going to say, yes, you've been to Canada. I've been to Canada. Yeah. You have never crushed a game like you just crushed this one. I have paid some attention over the last 25 years. I think, but it shocks me because you are the person who I'm like, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, wait, I don't know that story. Tell me that story, you know, and you don't remember. So yeah, well, thank God. Thank God. Wow. And I know you've I'm never very- had a three way impressed never in a three-way <laughs> true story that actually i wasn't sure about when i said it um, oh yeah yeah oh that was good well, okay. yeah i mean having nothing to do with a league of their own i just wanted to mess with you and i wanted to tell stories about myself they were great stories. so that was really a game of ego you give such good game hey thanks yeah yeah um oh. okay so for what I'm going to assign you is going to be really fun because it forces you to spend time with me, which I, yes, you know, yeah, that's a, that's a winner. Um, but yep. here's the interesting thing. I don't know a lot about the thing we're going to go see. Um, okay. Because it was just someone who I trust recommended it to me. And I was like, I've never even heard of that big shock. Uh, but it is BJ Novak's writing and directorial. I hope you haven't seen it already. Vengeance no. is the name of the movie. Okay. It's a comedy. It's interesting because my friend highly recommended it. And I do tr- trust her taste, but it got, it's like a 6-2 on Rotten Tomatoes and stuff. So we're going to see. We're going to see. Okay. But it gives okay. us an excuse to go to Burbank and go to this place I've yeah. always wanted to go to. Like at the, I don't remember what it's called, but it's like the Smokehouse. Not the Smokehouse, but there's a place over there that's like, like the Smokehouse. That's sort of legendary Burbank where you have drinks and cocktails. Oh. And then we'll go see. Uh, we'll go see Fun. the movie. We'll we'll like sneak Skittles in our purse and we'll bring them into the movie. Skittles. Oh, see, you don't know me. No, <laughs> you don't love no. Skittles. Chocolate and peanut butter uh, has to have chocolate and peanut butter. All right. Well, I'm gonna I feel like indulge. well then Reese's Pieces. We'll we'll, we'll figure yes. it out. Now, uh, did everyone just hear Mandy ask me out? Did, is that what ha- <laughs> just happened? Like in front of everybody. So I just want. You tried to couch it in like, you know, for the podcast, but <laughs> well, my please... God, you described a dream date. Isn't it great? We'll have cheese and yeah. everything. It's going to be yeah. awesome. Oh, I'm so down. All right. BJ Novak's Vengeance. Yeah, let's go. I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you soon. We'll talk about it next week. All righty. Love you. Love you. Love you.